Hello guys, uh, welcome all of you to today's farmcast. Uh, today also we'll be discussing five drugs of choice, uh, one monoclonal antibody, and a few questions asked by you guys. Uh, and uh, let's begin with the drugs of choice first. The first disorder for today, guys, is plague. And remember, for plague treatment, the drug of choice are aminoglycosides, and the preferred aminoglycoside nowadays is gentamicin. So for treatment, gentamicin is the drug of choice. Tetracyclines like doxycycline is an alternative to gentamicin. So you can use doxycycline, you can also use ciprofloxacin. So we go like this. I'll be using for treatment first gentamicin. If the patient is not a candidate for gentamicin for some reason, then I go for doxycycline. I, even if I cannot use doxycycline, then I go for ciprofloxacin, right? So three drugs which are preferred. Drug of choice, single best drug, gentamicin, treatment. But when I talk about post-exposure prophylaxis, right, PEP for plague, then minoglycosides are not the drug of choice. The preferred drug is doxycycline because, you know, doxy can be given by oral route and for post-exposure prophylaxis, giving a parenteral drug is not that feasible. Are you getting my point? So here, plague treatment, gentamicin, plague post-exposure prophylaxis, doxycycline. Now moving on to the next disorder, pneumocystis. Because pneumocystis is a very commonly asked MCQ in your exams, right? So that they ask you uh, for the treatment in immunocompetent, immunocompromised, so whatever may be the patient, right? Treatment, prophylaxis, the drug of choice for pneumocystis, it has always been and it is still cotrimoxazole. So cotrimoxazole is the universal drug of choice for pneumocystis. Now moving on to pneumococcal meningitis. So yes, pneumococcal meningitis, uh, when the patient comes to us, it will take us some time to uh, do the CSF analysis and come to the conclusion if it is an actual case of pneumococcal meningitis or not. But before that, what is the drug I will give for empirical therapy? Pneumococcal meningitis, I start the patient on vancomycin plus ceftriaxone. So vancomycin, that will give, it, give me a gram-positive cover and ceftriaxone gives me a gram-negative cover, right? But overall, if they ask you pneumococcal meningitis, what is the single best drug of choice? Your answer would be vancomycin. Next is polycythemia vera, PCV. Guys, polycythemia vera, the drug of choice is hydroxyurea. There is another drug that is preferred nowadays and that is called as anagrelide, A-N-A-G-R-E-L-I-D-E. -E. It is also preferred in PCV, but the drug of choice is hydroxyurea. And finally, guys, the last drug of choice for today is post-operative urine retention. So, guys, just think, if it is post-operative urine retention, which means I need to give a drug that contracts the bladder, and that has to be a cholinergic drug like beta -nicol. So, remember I told you earlier as well, post-operative ileus or paralytic ileus or post-operative urine retention, the drug of choice is beta -nicol. Though I can also use neostigmin. Right, but betanicol is more pre uh, preferred as compared to neostigmine. Right, guys. Now let's move on to the second part of the farmcast where I discuss one monoclonal antibody, and the monoclonal antibody that we are going to discuss today is uh, called as blinatumumab. So, guys, blinatumumab is a bispecific T cell engager, or it is called as a bite monoclonal antibody. And this drug blinatumumab, which is a bispecific T cell engager, it has been approved for treatment of relapsed or refractory ALL, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. It has been asked once in JIPMA, right? So in JIPMA, they had asked which of the following is a bite monoclonal antibody. Your answer was blinatumumab, right? So that's your monoclonal antibody, guys. Bite monoclonal antibody, blinatumumab, right? All right, guys, let's move on. To your doubt section and uh, mm, coming to the first doubt it has been asked by Madhura so Madhura is asking sir I'm about to complete my first revision now but I'm a slow learner when everyone tells to complete a particular subject in a few days like anatomy in two to three days I always wonder exactly how to go about that also how to complete one revision in a span of one month see Madhura 
all of us are different right so at a, the speed at a which one person can revise it is not compulsory that another person has to revise in that way that is the reason why everyone has to make his own timetable has to make his own routine based upon one's priority because nobody nobody else knows us as better as we know ourselves so you know exactly what kind of a person you are how much time you need to take for one revision and accordingly you need to set your timetable there is no fixed there is no hard and fast rule so don't worry about that now some might be able to revise in 2 to 3 days anatomy you might take 4 to 5 days it does not mean you are wrong it just means you are different right so we all of us are different in our own ways so that there is nothing wrong in that and when you're asking how to complete revision in one month see a revision in one month this is not for the first revision for the first revision you will need at least 2 to 3 months right at least 2 months then once you have revised it for 2 months after that you can revise it in one month and in that one month revision uh, you have to be on your toes i'm not saying it is easy it's a very difficult job and you need you need to prioritize you need to prefix the amount of time that a subject deserves so for example i have 30 days right so in 30 days i'll give like 2 to 3 days for medicine 2 to 3 days for surgery one day for obg and say one day for pharma then i'll give one day for two short subjects like radio and psychiatry so like that you have to divide your days then divide your days into hours like i have 3 days then i'll divide whole medicine into like say cvs and git for one day cns and some other topic for one day there are remaining small topics for uh, another day and then when i know that this day i have to cover cvs right i have to cover cvs and some other topic in that one day then i need to divide the hours that in 2 hours i need to complete arrhythmia in 2 hours i need to complete heart failure now guys this is what you need to do this is called as planning there is this is called as making a strategy and you need to you need to break it down into bits and pieces and try to cover cover gradually if you'll just take 2 to 3 days and try to cover medicine blindly you will not reach there you will not be able to cover because you need to know in every hour how much distance you must walk so that by the third day you would be able to cover the amount of distance that you need to to cover medicine so guys believe me these competitive exams they are not joke they are they are very difficult the reason being it, it not only requires hard work it, it requires some amount of smartness because you need to keep reminding yourself this is the time and in this time this is what i need to cover if you don't do that time and again every day every hour you will be losing the battle guys right so this is what you need to do madhura uh all right Parth Vagnani is asking, sir, high yield topic list for central and neat exam uh, separated. See, the high yield topics are same for the central and neat. I mean, there is not much difference. And uh, can all Mero faculty provide subject wise? See, we have already provided. I mean, I even I, in fact, I have a post. You can check the high yield uh, uh, topics, and uh, we have tried to compile all the list. with all the faculties and students over there so there is a post in mero go and check it all right coming to the next doubt it has been asked by dr swati so dr swati is asking sir i have completed 80% of the q bank before october and now i am revising notes but not able to do bookmarks because of covid illness and some other problems what should i do even revising notes sometimes seems like first reading taking too much time um see dr swati there is no hard and fast rule right if you are not able to do bookmarks that is okay that is okay i mean see the the most important thing is first thing you need to look at how much time you have in your hands and in those time you need to plan out what can you do right and based upon that you need to make a timetable and see as much as you can do right as much as you can do you might be missing on something some topics and it is absolutely okay right we are humans you are not bots so we cannot be programmed to cover each and everything in that particular time period so but you need to prioritize which is more important for you right and revising notes it is taking time now that happens that happens for that as as i've already said right before this uh, when i was covering another doubt the first doubt in fact that you need to set yourself time that, that in, in these 2 hours i need to revise this amount of content and you need to be focused so that you need to basically you need to extract more out of yourself right so and sometimes it happens that when you are just beginning revision when you are just beginning revision you will have these problems so once you continue your revision for say 15 days 20 days then you get the hang of it you get the pace so it is just like while you start to study right when you start your preparation you are in a different phase and you know that uh, you cannot uh, sit and study for 10 hours a day 
in the, from the beginning itself right when you are just when you have just started your preparation you cannot do that right so you take at least 15 days 30 days one month time so that you get that stamina the same thing happens with revision as well so if you have started this revision give some time to yourself and you will see it will become smooth with the uh, time uh sunaina sheikh sir i want to break uh, the next doubt sunaina sheikh is asking sir i want to break pharma and read with other subjects how to go about that can you suggest i have already told you many times that if you are weak in a subject like pharma if you are weak then don't go don't go about bolus study uh, just do what let us say um, i i i i have to revise pharma for 50 hours i'm i'm just thinking for the for the sake of example right i i need to revise pharma 50 hours so one thing i can do is i can revise pharma 10 hours a day for 5 days that is absolutely no no case we cannot do like that second i can do is uh, i can revise 5 5 hours a day um so 10 hours a day i'm revising for uh, so let us say 10 hours then it comes out to be 100 hours now i'm revising 5 hours a day then i'll revise for 20 days it comes out to be the same 100 hours but i break i've broken it down to 5 hours so if you are good at pharmacology you can revise it 5 hours a day and it's okay but if you are very weak at pharmacology and even after revising you are not able to recall things the best thing to do is not to study more than 2 hours so what i'll do is i'll just study 2 hours and i'll cover it up in 50 days right so i'll gradually revise 2 hours 2 hours 2 hours 2 hours i'll gradually take pharmacology now you cannot do it for all the subjects but you can selectively choose one subject which is your weakest which is your weakest weak link and for that you can go like this 2 hours a day and little bit revise whatever you have studied yesterday right so that will kind of consolidate five things which you are studying so take it 2 hours a day sunaina and it'll be fine all right uh, the next doubt has been asked by vaishnavi sai sir i have finished 3/4 of my revision and could notice improvement in my marks so guys this is what what i exactly say once you begin your revision once you begin your revision you complete your first revision you will see drastically your performance will increase and it will be significant improvement after the second revision um then vaishnavi is asking sir but i it's not adequate i feel sir what is the healthy score percentile one should get after first revision see there is nothing no rule as such but you can compare with your previ- previous uh, you know performance in the grand test you will see that after your first revision it will imp- improve drastically because now you have tried to squeeze the information that you have studied for many months in in a couple of months right 60 to 70 days now then what you do is one month then you, you again further squeeze that information so after the second revision you will see there would be a significant significant improvement in your uh, performance rank you would be able to remember things you would be able to recall things in the exam and you will see that the confusion between two options it will become lesser and lesser and that is when you will realize that you are on the right path so believe in yourself guys it is not time to give up now right all right uh, next doubt has been asked by dagas sonpal so dagas sonpal is asking sir gt score earlier during first reading were around 350 now after completing the first revision in the latest gt it is 500 i want to get a surgery government seat how should i go on from now to reach at least uh, 700 to at least to claim that seat so you are on the right path dagas your score was 350 now it is getting 500 and uh, you are almost completing your first revision so you see you have, i i just now told so today is most about gt right so i just now told that the first revision there would be improvement and you will see even significant improvement after the second revision so dagas uh, you hold yourself and uh, go with a roar to the second revision right now try to squeeze the information further revise further uh, time and again those in uh, one month time and you will see that you will easily you will easily cross 700 right in fact i have seen that I mean once if you are start studying honestly and if if you are doing your revision grade then after the second revision uh, if your rank is all india rank is somewhere around 3000 4000 5000 right uh, after your second revision if it is good you will come under 1000 immediately after the second revision it happens all right so mr agnihotri is asking sir i have a real problem in remembering tests name in ortho and at surgery example douglas test ortolani test etc help right so see I'll tell you from my own experience that uh, whatever for whatever things I was not comfortable with anything it could be anything I was not comfortable in my preparation and I was not comfortable for example with um, uh, the cycles in biochemistry right cycles in biochemistry 
I was not comfortable. I was I'll always forget those Krebs cycles, etc. So what I do for such things, so anything, pathology, anatomy, medicine, anything, if something is troubling me a lot, time and again, I'll just write them down in a piece of paper and paste it on my wall. And it would be my daily routine. I would not study them separately. But whenever I relax for half an hour, let us say, I'm having say, a cup of tea or coffee, I'll just go to that wall uh, where, I, where I've pasted all these, uh, you know, my unwanted stuff, which I don't want to study. So at the, that time, I'll go and just have a look. So by looking every day, right, time and again, time and again, time and again, what it does, it, it creates a pictorial memory. Not only word memory, it creates a pictorial memory. And you will say that all of a sudden, right, you'll be able to recall things. It's magic. It works like a magic, right? So try to do that. All right. Next audience has been asked by Ankush Singh. Sir, I've failed multiple times in my UG exam and my confidence is shattered. Sometimes I feel as if this is not for me. I find it difficult to learn things, how to regain back confidence and do good in NEET PG. Ankur Singh, let me tell you, I have seen students who had a very dismal undergraduate lives. I have seen students who are foreign medical graduates, right, not from good institutes where they did not have uh, adequate exposure. But what happens is, once you make a goal, once you want something so much then, that, that you are ready to give up everything for that goal, then almost everything is achievable, right? So I've told this multiple times from which suppose you are, you are from a peripheral institute, right? Not from a prime institute. And uh, suppose you did not study that well in your UG days. Then I'm not saying that, you know, you can get under 100 rank just by like, just uh, like that. But achieving a rank of say 1000 or 1200 or 1300 is not impossible is not impossible and I'm not I'm, I'm not saying it is easy as well it is difficult but the first thing you need to do is realize what is your goal right and based upon that you need to strategize you need to work on your weaknesses see it's not that everybody is a you know uh, excellent in each and every subject so some subjects we, we, we are comfortable with some subjects we are weak in so accordingly based upon our weakness and our strength we need to make a plan for ourselves right so make a plan for yourself and I can tell you this from my own experience with many students, right? They worked hard, they worked hard and they are among the, you know, best doctors nowadays practicing. They have even done their MD and MS and they're practicing. So it's all, see this, these are competitive exams and competitive exams is about knowledge. I'm not saying it's not about knowledge. It's about knowledge, but apart from knowledge, it's about a lot of hard work that you need to do to achieve that knowledge, right? So remember, I, I always uh, say, um, a, a quote of mine that I have written that quote is um, hard work can compensate for intelligence but intelligence can never ever compensate for hard work right so if you, if you think you are not that intelligent or if you've not not studied well then you can do adequate amount of hard work increase your percentage of hard work and you can beat any person with any kind of IQ I can guarantee you that right Ankush so don't take it into your heart you are capable of almost anything you just need to believe in yourself and most important thing make a plan make a strategy because without a strategy you're like a blind man right so make a strategy and follow, follow that strategy and you'll land in a good seat don't worry all right next doubt has been asked by mudra patel so mudra patel is asking sir my um i'm only dependent upon marrow plan and i finished my videos and side revision uh, I completed only 575 modules and some module I am seeing again for revision and I feel it's necessary to do again all the MCQ for me because I now can understand what thing is important and correlate the things after giving grand test but let's take a lot of time. So I can finish the subject in allotted time. So to revising all these MCQs is a very large doubt and I have it's a lengthy doubt and I fear to solve the MCQ on other platforms so I'm not doing that. I'm still I'm not able to reach up to 400 max in GT, right? I'm giving only marrow GT till now. What should I do? See, all right. So it's a all right, Mudra. So what you need to do, see, what Mudra is asking is basically he he has done MCQs uh, previously, right? When he was studying, and now he he has completed his first reading, and then again he wants to do the MCQs, right? Because he, he has learned a lot of things. But let me tell you, Mudra. The problem is you can do whatever you want, but the time in your hand is less. And now you need to prioritize, as I've already said. So your priority should be 
um, not only solving MCQs but also revising your notes. So going forward from here on, right, try to do at least two to three revisions, right? One big revision, one small revision, and one micro revision of six to seven days, where you need to brush up with the images and all other things. Now, as far as solving MCQs is concerned, um, you need to dedicate a certain amount of time, let us say two to three hours a day, and Right, solve as many MCQs as possible in those two to three hours and try to incorporate those two to three hours in between. Like, let us say, suppose you are revising for two hours to three hours your notes, then take a one hour MCQ schedule, solve one hour MCQ, then study for two to three hours, then one hour MCQ. So try to just, you know, make it as more spicy so that you are not bored. All right. And... Ankush Singh is also asking, sir, how is psychiatry branch as a career? What are the pros and cons? So I, I think, Ankush, uh, psychiatry, if you'll ask this to a psychiatry faculty, it would be much, much better. But see, if you'll ask, you're asking my perspective, uh, see, any branch, any day, any branch is good. The only thing is you should love that branch, right? So even anatomy is good. And if you think about money, fame, etc., they come with time in each and every branch they come with time and if you love a branch you're bound to excel if you love a branch you're bound to excel and then everything materialistic with it with money fame etc they will follow they will follow automatically but if you do opposite if you follow money and fame and etc then it kind it kind of might work initially but on the long run it does not work because if you don't lo love a thing that you are doing right then you won't get serotonin because of the money you earn you'll get dopamine but for the love of the subject that you are working you'll get serotonin and i hope you know the difference between serotonin and dopamine both are different right all right and coming to an unusual doubt that has been asked by azan sheikh has asked me sir just to curious about the tattoo on your arm and the story behind it uh, azan sheikh uh, yeah, I don't mind sharing it. See, usually what happens is uh, we uh, we are three close school friends, right? And we were uh, we were on the verge of getting married, right? So we could get married uh, anytime. <laughs> so we thought before getting married, uh, we three school friends, uh, we thought uh, on a trip to Goa. So the trip was kind of zindagi na milegi dobara kind of trip, you know? So we had our bucket list. So we wanted to do a lot of things which we, we had never done. And one thing that we had never done was get a tattoo. So it was in our bucket list. So all of, all of us, we got the tattoos in Goa while we were, you know, living up our Sindhagi na Milegi Dubara kind of thing. So that's cool. I mean, um, if you'll ask me, see, we make a lot of friends, right, throughout our career. But the closest of friends, and those friends are actually like families, are the friends which you make in your school days when you are so naive and... Uh, you don't know much about life and uh, you do not do any calculations before making someone friend so there is uh, the life is not so much materialistic and um, these things they do not come into mind once you grow up it is more kind of professional friendship but the school days are great and uh, i still try to catch up with my friends school friends whenever i go to bangalore because both of them they are based in bangalore and i try to do some catching up with them so thanks for asking this ajan sheikh and that's all for today guys uh, if you have any kinds of doubts uh, anything except my tattoos you can <laughs> let me know your doubts in the comment box and i'll be more than happy to include your uh, doubts in the farmcast take care bye bye this is dr ranjan with you